And so that gets you into the game. That that gets you in to be able to play. But it's the engagement, it's the people skills that take you to that, that next level. That's the difference maker. Um, so the first principle, if you will, is to be able to master your emotions, right? And this is where it all begins because it's only when we're in control of our own emotions that we're even in a position to take a potentially negative situation or person and turn it into a win for everyone involved. Is your business struggling right now? You might think that it's because you don't have enough sales, but the reality is it's because you don't have the attention of the marketplace. This is attention equals dollars. You deserve more. Your business deserves more. And I'm here to teach you everything that I know on how to get the attention that you need and to turn that attention into dollars. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Attention Equals Dollars podcast. I'm your host, Luke Nessler, where we come to you each week from the Impact Media Studios. You might be listening to us on iTunes. You might be watching us on Facebook or YouTube. Each week, we bring you a special guest to talk to you about how to gain attention, how to get visibility on your brand, because we know attention equals dollars. This show is your blueprint. It's your roadmap. And today, we got a special guest. He's the co-author of the best-selling book, The Go-Giver, with over eight 100,000 copies sold. He's a public speaker on the topic of ultimate influence. We're going to be talking about that today, and I'm really excited about it. He also has a new book that's out, The Go-Giver Influencer. You can get that at thegogiver.com. Again, that's thegogiver.com. He's here to share his wisdom on the power of genuine influence in business and beyond. I'm super excited to have Mr. Bob Berg on the show. Bob, thanks for joining us today. Welcome to the show. Hey, Luke. It's great to be with you. I'm really excited to take a deep dive into your topic of influence, of ultimate influence. Um, but before we go into that, I, I, I'll take, let's, let's take a step back. What, what inspired The Go-Giver? Where, where did this all come from? Well, I had a, um, a, a book, uh, my first book, which was written in the mid nineties, uh, was called Endless Referrals, Network Your Everyday Contacts into Sales. And it was a book written uh, and based on how I built my businesses, which was simply on developing relationships with people where people began to know you, like you, trust you, want to do business with you, want to refer you to others. And it was a how-to book. Uh, and, but for years, I read business parables and had always loved business parables and thought, wouldn't it be kind of a neat idea if we could take the basic premise of endless referrals, which was all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust and put that into a short, powerful story that would really connect with people. And so my first thought was, well, okay, so what is the the main characteristic of someone who builds these kinds of relationships uh, quickly and sustainably. Mm. And, and it's that they're always giving to others. They're giving value to mm. others, always looking for ways to bring value to others. They move from an I or me focus to an other focus. And so uh, we came up with the title, The Go-Giver, uh, which people kind of assume is the opposite of a go-getter, but it's not. We love go-getters too. <laughs> right. Go getters take action. And we love Absolutely. that. Action is very important. Uh, in fact, the opposite of a go giver is not a go getter. The opposite of a go giver is a go taker. Right. That person who is focused on the take and they tend to you know, be very frustrated in their in their their businesses. Um, and so I, I asked John David Mann, a friend of mine who I knew from um, he was actually the editor in chief of a magazine that I wrote for, great writer and storyteller. I'm much a, more of a how-to person. Uh, and so we combined on it. And that's really how The Go-Giver came about. The, the key message being that shifting your focus from getting to giving, giving meaning constantly and consistently providing value to others is not only a, a, a nice way, a fulfilling way to do business, it's the most financially profitable way as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this, you know, for those listening and watching today, th this is the exact reason why I was uh, very, very excited to have Bob on the show. Bob, I first heard you, um, I believe it was on our, our mutual friends uh, podcast, Matt Monero's podcast. Oh, and I Matt, immediately great. resonated with it because your, um, your whole theory and method on the go-giver is exactly what I've done to build my brand. Um, and I did so not really knowing sure. what I was doing when I started. I just, my, my parents are both school teachers, right? Retired school teachers. So 
as a young entrepreneur, when I was starting this business, the first thing that I thought of is here's how I'm going to market myself is I'm going to educate. I'm going to bring value. I'm mm -hmm. going to teach others what they need to know about marketing and where my competitors were shaking, scratching their head of, why are you teaching them how to do what you get paid to do? What it did was it built rapport, it built value, and it positioned me as the, the thought leader and the expert in my space. So when I heard what you're talking about with the go-giver and influence, um, I immediately resonated with it. And I want to dive into that. So when somebody says, what is influence? Obviously, people might take it different ways. It might mean different things. But, but talk to us about what is influence? What does that mean to you when somebody brings that word up? Well, you ask a great question because it's always important to define terms so that we know, so that we're all coming at it from the same yes. uh, basis, if you will, the same foundation. Uh, influence on a very basic level can be defined as simply the ability to move a person or persons to a desired action, usually within okay. the context of a specific goal. That's the definition of influence. I don't believe that that is the substance or the essence of influence. The, the, the essence of influence is pull. Pull as opposed to push. Mm. Uh, you know, it's like that old saying, how far can you push a rope? And the answer is not very far, at least not very fast or very effectively, which is why great influencers don't push. You, you never hear people say things like, wow, that Dave or that Susan, she is so influential. She has a lot of push with people, right? She sure is pushy. He sure is push. No, hmm. they, they, he, he has a lot of influence. He's very influential. He has a lot of pull with people. Hmm. Because hmm. That's what influence is. It's an attraction. Great influencers attract people first to their idea, or first to themselves, excuse me, mm. and only then to their idea. And how do you do that? And that's the question. Well, you take your focus off of yourself and understand that to influence others, it needs to be about them. Mm. You know, when I speak at sales conferences, one of the first things I'll often say to the audience is, and we, and we say this jokingly, not in a dogmatic fashion, but I'll say, you know, nobody's going to buy from you because you have a quota to meet. Mm. And you know, we all laugh because we know that's true. No one's buying for, in other words, they're not buying for our reasons. They're not going to buy from you because you need the money. They're not even going to buy from you because you're a really nice person who believes in what you do. They're going to buy from you because they believe that they will be better off by doing so than by not yes. doing so. And yes. that's the only reason they should. So in order to do this and, and influence and to be able to gently pull, we need, we need to do exactly what selling is, which is why selling is influence, and that's this. We need to discover their needs, their wants, mm. their desires. Uh, you know, their goals, their values. We're helping them to solve a problem. We make it so influence is really all about them. It's about those people whose lives we choose to touch. I love that. And I think this is, this is an area that everybody needs to and can get much, much stronger with when it comes to their marketing and their, their selling ability because it's, it, the bottom line is somebody, um, are you familiar with Grant Cardone? Sure. So Grant Cardone, as you're saying this, I'm thinking, obviously Grant Cardone is an amazing salesman and that's what everybody kind of thinks of when they hear him. But as you're saying this, I'm starting to, to question, is he a better influencer than he is a salesman? And I think the answer is without a doubt, it's yes. There's a reason why he could put 9,000 people in a stadium. It's because he has influence. Um, so talk to me about the difference between selling and influencing somebody to a decision to buy something. Is there a difference or is it one in the same? I think it's one in the same. I think influ you know, selling is influencing another person. Now, again, we always have to, to uh, look at the vernacular of, of what we're talking about. We're, we're through the selling process, we're moving someone to a certain decision Mm -hmm. uh, and in order to do that and do it the correct way and do it in a sustainable way, we've got to make it all about them, all about the value we're, we're bringing to them. Now, different people have different styles, of course, okay. and Grant's style may be different from someone else's and that person's style may be different from someone else's, but you'll notice 
when anyone is very, very successful in terms of selling, again, both short-term and sustainable, it's not like there should be one or the other, uh, then you'll find that they're always bringing value to others. Now, let's understand what value is. There's a, a difference between price and value. Price is a dollar figure. It's a dollar right. amount. The dollar figure it's finite it, it right value on the other hand is the relative worth or desirability of a thing to the end user mm. or beholder in other words what is it about this thing this product service concept idea philosophy what have you that brings so much worth or value to someone that they will willingly exchange whether yes. it's their, their money for it or their time or the opportunity or what have you okay and so but here's the key Value is always in the eyes of the beholder. It's not what we believe is mm. valuable about what we do. It's uh, about our product, about our service, about the benefits, about what have you. It's about what that person believes. Mm. And so, so any good salesperson is always going to focus on discovering what that other person finds to be a value and they're going to give them that thing. And that's where, you know, that's where influence comes in. So I want to talk about how, how this can be really tied into one's marketing. And obviously, whether you're doing traditional or where we um, stress the importance of and, 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 and thrive ourselves, the digital space. It's much easier to provide massive amounts of value to position yourself as an influencer and to have influence on platforms like what we're on today, Facebook, YouTube iTunes, things like that. How, how can somebody be a better influencer? How can somebody like myself or like Aaron, our director, or any of the entrepreneurs watching today, how can they do a better job of influencing somebody in their marketing? And I know you have five secrets. Would, you, would this be a good way to dive into those now? Well, yeah, I, I think when you're talking about, in, there's, there's two aspects. One, when you're talking about providing information like like you've done a great job of doing you've educated you know you found out first you've determined who your market is who sure. you're trying to attract you're not trying to attract everyone you're trying to attract a certain uh, person a certain avatar if you will right you're looking to do so the information that you or Aaron or 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 anyone is is going to send out on that kind of basis is going to be what you have discovered is what they're looking for those are the people who will be Absolutely. attracted to you once that happens, now the engagement comes because the, the most successful marketers are able to engage with others. They, they may have to, of course, broadcast at the beginning, by, which is what an article is or what a, a, a blog post is, a, uh, a podcast. But then when people reply or people call in, it, we've got to make it very easy for people to be able to, to uh, communicate what they need so sure. that we can engage and be responsive to that. Okay. So that's where the, uh, the five principles might come in because those are, and they're really pretty generic principles as far as people skills. And we know that people skills are pretty much 90%, you know, of the game. Absolutely. Tech is important. Talent is important. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But at this point, there are so many good technicians out there. There are good, uh, uh, you know, writers out there, there's pretty much good, there's a lot of talent out there. There really is. And so that gets you into the game. That, that gets you in to be able to play. But it's the engagement, it's the people skills that mm. take you to that, that next level. That's the difference maker. Um, so the first principle, if you will, is to be able to master your emotions, mm. right? And this is where it all begins because it's only when we're in control of our own emotions that we're even in a position to take a potentially negative situation or person and turn it into a win for everyone involved. Uh, the challenge is that as human beings, we're very emotion based, emotion driven, right? We'd like to think we're logical and we are to a right. certain extent, but we're pretty much emotionally driven. We make major decisions based on emotion and we back up those emotional decisions with logic. We rationalize, which is to tell ourselves rational lies and, and we use that to justify. <laughs> so we're not saying, we're not suggesting that anyone denies their emotions or foregoes their emotions. Not at all. Emotions are a great part of life. They make well, life worthwhile, right? They yeah. bring us joy and they also have some wisdom to them too. But we need to master our emotions as opposed to our emotions mastering us. In hmm. the 
go give her influencer, one of the mentors, because in this story, there's two mentors and two protégés. Uh, one of the mentors tells her, her protégé, she says, when you allow your, because first there's a, there's a saying that, that uh, one of my friends, Dondi Scumachi once told me, she says, take your emotions along for the ride, but make sure you are driving the car. Okay. Mm. You're at the wheel. Your emotions are in the passenger seat safely, you know, seat buckled in. The mentor in the story says to Jackson, the protege, if you allow your emotions to drive the car, you're putting your life at the hands of a drunk driver. Mm. And wow. that's what we need to understand that we need yeah. to be, by all means, consult our emotions. They've got wisdom to them, but the, this, our decisions need to be based on logic. If we want to create the context of making the right decision. And if you know, to the degree you make the right decisions, that's the degree to which the outcomes are going to be good. It's not guaranteed. You can make a great decision and there can be a lousy outcome. In fact, Annie Duke wrote a great book called Thinking in Bets. I don't know if you ever heard of Annie. She was a, um, uh, a world poker champion. You know, on TV they have the – I don't play poker. I never watched her on, on TV. I, I, I have heard her podcast on with Matt Monero as well, I believe. Oh, okay, that, yeah. That's what turned me on to her, so I know what you're talking about. Yeah, great. Her, her book, great. Thinking in Bets, was a masterpiece. It's become one of my favorite books and has helped me in my decision-making process, by the way. Yeah. Uh, but he talks about just because you make the right decision doesn't mean the outcome is going to be as you want, but you yeah. increase the odds dramatically – when you make the right decision. And that's why it's important that logic is at the wheel. Yes. Not, okay, not the emotion. So that's the first one. Uh, second is to play, put yourself in the other person's shoes, which, you know, that, okay. it, that sounds trite, right? Because we've all heard that before. Uh, put yourself in the other person's shoes. But then you think about it. It's not that easy to do because we all no. have, most of us have different size feet. So literally, we cannot put ourselves necessarily in that person's shoes. In other words, we come from different mm. beliefs. We mm. come from different ways of seeing the world, uh, different mindsets, different paradigms. And when you think about it, most conflict is simply two or more people seeing the same thing from mm. different viewpoints. Mm. So this is where we get into what we talked about before. In order to put yourself in that person's shoes and understand what's, what they're thinking, you need to ask questions, but then you need to listen. Mm. And listen not just with your ears. And one of the, one of the, uh, the other mentor, uh, Coach George, uh, said this to Jillian, the other protege, said, don't just listen with your, your ears. That's the surface listening that most of us do. That's, that's the listening in order to talk. Right, we're kind of waiting our turn till we can get our point in. Right, so right. instead, listen with your eyes, listen with your posture, listen. He said, with the back of your neck. In other mm -hmm. words, put your entire being into listening to this person. Now, when you do this, two things happen. One, you actually learn. You find out what's driving them, what's motivating them. What my, one of my heroes, Harry Brown, used to say. People ask all the time, "How do I motivate a prospect to buy?" You don't have to motivate your prospect to buy. They're already motivated. Your only job is to discover what they're motivated by and mm. give it to them, you know, assuming that your product or service would do that. Okay, so, so, and when we, so when we listen, we learn, and this person feels listened to. Mm. And that's a basic need for anyone, to feel listened to, feel understood. And we can do that just as much online when we engage as opposed to just broadcast, right? When oh, we, and the, uh, so uh, the third one is to set the proper frame. This is so important. This is, this is 90% of influencing a person in the right way to a mutually beneficial outcome is mm. to set the proper frame. And this is nothing more than understanding that the frame is the foundation from which everything else evolves. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> it's, you know, it's, it's having a, uh, you know, and let's say we'll take this offline for a moment and say you're in front of a, a, a prospective customer who seems kind of um, defensive and, you know, maybe they've had a, a bad situation before with a salesperson uh, and they just kind of say, well, you know, I'm, I'm just, this is just, a, you know, I'm not going to buy anything today. And, you know, you can tell they're defensive. That's a frame they've brought to the table. And right. if you buy into that frame, now it's an argument between two people. Mm. And 
no one's going to win. They're not going to win because they're not going to get your product or service. You're not going to win because obviously you didn't help someone get your product or service. So what if you reframe it? What if you set a better frame by saying something like, uh, you know, Mary, uh, while we've been able to help a lot of people with this, this particular product, whether or not it's the right answer for you, uh, we simply can't know without exploring deeper and determining whether it meets your need. So please know our discussion is for both of us to determine that. And if it does, great. So, if not, yeah. that's okay too. As you're saying this, there's so many ex specific examples of things that we encounter day to day with yeah. being in a client services business sure. that everything that you're saying, I'm like, oh, wow, it's spot on. Oh, My chief you. marketing officer could use this when you're talking about mastering your emotions, step into their shoes, set the frame. I'm literally going to, Aaron, we're going to cut from tip number one to, to secret number five. And we're going to play this in our team meeting because what Bob is talking about is something that can be used in a lot of different scenarios, in a sales scenario, in a customer satisfaction scenario, probably even with your spouse, if I'm not mistaken. So th th this is awesome. So, all right, please continue. So we're at number three, set the frame. This is awesome. Yeah. And then, so number four is communicate with tact and empathy. Mm. Uh, my dad has always defined tact as the language of strength. Mm. And I've always enjoyed that definition because to me, it takes a strong person. It takes a mighty person to not just react when someone says something, right? Especially when that customer comes back with something that you, you know, they're not correct. Right. And you right. just want to kind of jump on, right. Or, you know, you have a, a, a prospect provides an objection that, you know, you've answered twice already and they're just, and you know, but, or that email comes in and you just want to click off or uh, right away or, or somebody says something of a political nature that you don't agree with and you just want, but when you don't do that, you're mighty. Okay, and you should congratulate yourself. You've controlled your emotions and you, and so tact is a way of communicating an idea to someone that they ordinarily may not have wanted to hear, but doing so in such a way that not only are they not defensive toward you and resistant to your idea, but they're open to you and more accepting of your idea. And that's what communicating tactfully allows mm. you to do. Now, empathy, which is so important. I believe it's the most important communication skill there is. And I say it's a skill, empathy. And empathy, which I, the dictionary definition is the identification with or vicarious experiencing of another person's feelings. But we don't necessarily know how they feel because we're not them. And we may not have been in that position before. But what empathy is, is, is it's, it, it's being able to communicate through your tactful words or through your, the way you say it, or through just who you are, you're communicating, hey, I may not understand exactly how you feel, hmm. but I understand you're feeling something, and that this something is distressful to you, and I'm there to help you work through it. You know, you're yeah. safe with me. Awesome. And again, this allows this person to feel comfortable with you. It allows this person to feel safe and communicate, because you know, hey, you know it's the objection you never hear Mm. which is what gets you, right? right? And so when we can help someone feel comfortable with the situation, you know, that's what empathy really does. Sure. Yeah, I love that. It's, and that, that's an area that I've had to uh, self-audit myself and realize that at one point I, I wasn't very good. Why are they not understanding this? And I would get frustrated um, because, and again, relating it back to what I do professionally, it's not, um, it's not easy to understand for somebody that didn't, grow up with social media or somebody that's never generated revenue with, you know, Facebook ads or YouTube ads. So it's confusing. So it's, it's natural for me to be like, why I don't understand why this person doesn't understand. And the second that I started to, to do it, it's why I'm smiling because everything you're going through, you know, step into the other person's shoes. Well, I understand now how this person feels when they, they're confused on how do I track the effectiveness of this? Mm -hmm. what, what, what does it mean when you're talking about this? And then I have to take a step back. I'm empathetic to how they feel, how they act. Once I started doing really steps one, two, three, four, and you're getting ready to go into, be f into five, it, it, the conversations began to be much, much easier and much more beneficial for me and the client. So this, this is great um, and can be used again in your marketing or in a client relationship. So let's, let's talk about number five. I'm excited to dive into that secret as well. Well, this one is to let go of having to be right. Now, it's hard for is, some people. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, very. And this is the counterintuitive one. When John and I write our, our stories, we tend to have five, you know, what we call either laws or principles or secrets or whatever. And the first four usually face the same direction. And then the last one is the one that's sort of counterintuitive. Okay. And that's this one where we say, let go of having to be right. Because are we mm -hmm. saying, well, you don't care about being right? No, of course not. You care about being right. You prefer to be right. You're certainly going to prepare yourself to be right. What it means, though, is you let go of the attachment to having mm. right. Mm. And when you do this, it, it actually makes you much more influential <laughs> rather than less. And the reason why, two reasons. One is when you let go of the emotional attachment to having to be right, you allow yourself to go into learner's mode right? And so you open yourself up to ideas and, and you place yourself in the position of being able to have more knowledge. Yeah. This as opposed to the people who just once they have an idea in their head, that's it. They are right. not open to anything else. Uh, you know, we call these people the, you know, don't, <laughs> my mind's made up. Don't confuse me. Right. With the type right. of people. And these are the people who suffer from confirmation bias, which is a term you hear a lot lately, and it means exactly what it says. Uh, someone suffering from confirmation bias, when they hear some new information, if it confirms their already held beliefs, they'll agree with it. If it doesn't, they'll ignore it. And it's, it's unconscious. It's not something that's purposeful. But someone with confirmation bias, they cannot learn. They cannot grow. They can never know anything more than they know now, and like the old, and, and much of what they think they know, they probably don't, okay? Sure. It's the old saying that was attributed to Mark Twain, though he, he never said it, and that is, uh, it ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble, it's what you're absolutely sure you do know that just ain't so. And, and so <laughs> when, you, when you can't let go of having to be right, you fall into that trap. Now, so the first advantage of, of letting yourself uh, not having to be right is that you learn more. The second thing, and this is powerful, when you're dealing with someone who understands that you are not looking to just be right at all costs, you're not looking to be right at their expense, you're not looking to be right by making them wrong, you're simply seeking truth, hmm. this person's going to be much more amenable to your ideas. That's powerful. Folks, we have... We have Bob Berg with us, author, co-author of The Go-Giver Influencer. You can get it at thegogiver.com. Um, and those were five secrets that can help each and every one of you listening, whether it be business, whether it be personal. Um, I, Bob, I have one last question I want to dive into because I, I, I know that you have one sentence that is guaranteed to prevent misunderstandings. And it's something that I'm intrigued about because we all could use that. So, Talk to me about that. What is this, this secret sauce, this one sentence that can prevent misunderstandings between me and, let's say, a client? Yeah, well, this, is a, this was a game changer, and it's really so simple like anything else. It's really very simple once you know it. And, it, and it, it goes into principle number two about stepping into their shoes. Remember, we were talking about people having different belief systems. Sure. Okay? So someone says something, and there can be as many people as there are listening, there can be that many definitions. Okay. So let's say someone says this needs to be done as soon as possible, okay? And so you've got three or four people. And let, let's take it there's a, a, a team meeting that, that, that you have, okay, with your, your, your teams. This, okay, listen, the client just said uh, things have changed. Got to get this in as soon as possible, okay? You say that on a Monday morning. Now, uh, Wednesday evening, close of day, uh, four or five people in your team report, only one person actually has their work in. So what happened? I said as soon as possible. Well, what does as soon as possible mean? To one person who got the work in, it meant you drop everything else and you do this right away. To another person, they came from another team where as soon as possible meant, well, you finish what you're doing now and then you get to the other one. Another person's from a team where as soon as possible meant nothing. You just give it lip service and keep doing what you do, right? So you've got mm -hmm. different people who have a different um, yep. a definition. So right. what if someone said, hey, boss, listen, just for my own clarification, when you say as soon as possible, is there a specific day or time you're thinking of? Then you'd say, well, yes, Wednesday afternoon, five o'clock, end of day. Boom. Now everybody, you know, 
No. Got it. Or if you said when you're doing this, it says client says as soon as possible. Uh, and so uh, just so we're all on the same page, that's where tact comes in, just so we're all on the same page. Um, that would be Wednesday afternoon, end of day, five o'clock. Boom. Now everybody's in, saying the same thing. This greatly reduces the chances of any misunderstanding. So from now on, whenever someone says something to you, unless you are absolutely positively sure the two of you are defining that thing the same way, and you're probably not, hmm. just ask them to define it. Ask them what that means or what they mean by that or is there something specific? You know, you can think of yeah. the exact words. Because we it's, never want to make the mistake of thinking we know what another person's thinking or that right. they know what we're thinking because we don't and they don't. Right. Yeah. And again, my, my whole staff is going to watch this episode because I know I've been guilty of that. Hey, I need this right away. So well, what, we all what, have. what does that mean? <laughs> to Aaron, it might, that might mean, well, as soon as I get done with this client project, right. <laughs> I can put that client project off and do this by the end of the day. So, um, this will help me perform better with my staff, with my clients. And again, listen, if it's, if it's for internal workings in your business, or if it's in your marketing, influence is a big thing, right? It, it, some people look at it as sales. I think a lot of people have this negative, this sour taste in their mouth when they hear sales. Well, if that's the case, how can you influence somebody to transact with you? Um, and I think that that's, that's, for me, that's a way that makes me think of how I can promote myself, how I can sell my product several different ways. How can I influence you to think that I am the best, the best option, the only option that's going to help you get the results you're looking for rather than hard selling, pressure selling? How can you influence somebody? Bob, you're an absolute master at this. I, uh, I, I wish we had more time um, because I have so many questions, but uh, we have mutual friends with our, our friends at Two Market Media, Stephen Hank. I'm sure we'll mm -hmm. be doing more together. Um, and I'd love to have you back on another episode to take a deeper dive in okay. this and talk more about your books as well. Um, where can people find more about you and more about the Go-Giver, the Go-Giver Influencer, and all your other products that you have out there? Uh, yeah, best place to go is The Go-Giver without the title, without the uh, hyphen, thegogiver.com. And pretty much everything, everything is there. Now, are you on social media as well? Yeah, yeah. On Facebook, uh, we also have a Facebook Live uh, show. Uh, I'm on Twitter and LinkedIn right. and pretty much everywhere. And and there's a uh, a link to me on social media at that website. As well. I love it, Bob. I appreciate you being here. I'm grateful for having you on the show. I I, I really I really enjoyed this. I think this will be uh, the the first episode of the Attention Equals Dollars podcast that I make it mandatory for each wow. one of my staff members to uh, to listen to because genuinely, you're the, just the five secrets alone, and there are so many other things things that we could have dove into, but just the five secrets alone can help us better serve our clients. And it, it can help every single person watching this better serve their clients, their friends, their family. Uh, I'm super appreciative that you came on today, Bob. Well, that means a lot to me. It really does. Thank you so much. Best of continued success to you. I know you're doing some terrific work out there. Yeah, absolutely. I look forward to speaking with you soon. Listen, if you are watching this show, do us a favor, tag a friend that needs to hear this message. Tag a friend so that they can discover Bob and everything he has going on with the Go-Giver the go and thegogiver.com. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Subscribe to the show on, on YouTube if that's where you like to watch your content. Or like the Luke Nessler page on Facebook and tag a friend if that's where you like to watch your content. Remember, you have to have attention before you can generate revenue because attention equals dollars. We'll see you folks next week. Have a wonderful, successful weekend. Is your business struggling right now? You might think that it's because you don't have enough sales. But the reality is, it's because you don't have the attention of the marketplace. This is attention equals dollars. You deserve more. Your business deserves more. And I'm here to teach you everything that I know on how to get the attention that you need and to turn that attention into dollars.